So this is just going to be another talking video. But I've got Twitter or X along today. So we're going to, I'm going to go through the X stuff while I'm out here on the trail. By the way, a young woman just saw a bear. <laughs> she was on her way out. I'm on my way in. I don't know, bears, uh, I, I should be scared. I, they could attack you, but uh, most of the time they're more scared of you than you are of them. Unless they got cubs. You don't want to mess with the cubs. Mama bear. Anyway, the uh, first tweet I wanted to get onto was uh, Schultz. Germany's task is to ensure the existence and security of Israel. <laughs> By the way, let's get a view. I'm going to whip around here. Here we go. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? Pretty wild, huh? Of course, if I saw a bear coming across there, I might be a little bit worried. But uh, so I wanted to talk about that for just a second because Germany's facing a hell of a, a tough time this winter. You know, after the United States. States Empire blew up uh, their pipeline, you know, Germany's task should be taking care of the German people. <laughs> if they're giving money to Israel for the war, I, I don't know how their people put up with it. The, their government said nothing about the United States blowing up the pipeline. Their government says says nothing about their government giving money to Israel when they're going to be hurting this winter. The, gov the people say nothing about the fact that their industry's moving out of the country and that they're not going to have any jobs. They're going to freeze to death this winter. I don't get it, man. The world don't make much sense to me. Same with the United States. You know, we got Biden going over to, uh, to well, I, I can't imagine that meeting. <laughs> we, got a, we got a puppet and a corrupt uh, official, Netanyahu, meeting together in Israel. And then, of course, he's supposed to go on to Egypt. And uh, I tell you, and that's, that's uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was I, in the, my previous video, I told you. I told you Hamas achieved their objective. They enraged the uh, Israelis, uh, and, and they showed the world what the Israelis are. I can't even listen to right-wing radio anymore. I can't listen to Todd Stearns, Sean Hannity, Mark Levin. Uh, these are the most bloodthirsty people on the planet. I've never seen anything like it. We're seeing the extermination of the Palestinian people. 1,000 bombs a day. Imagine if somebody dropped 1,000 bombs on your city. What would the loss of life be? So I, I threw out a number that there's probably 9,000 dead. That was about a week ago, or with the last video. And uh, and where did I base that on? I was saying about 10 people per bomb that uh, are getting killed. Because when you take down an entire, one bomb takes down an entire apartment complex, that could be hundreds of people with one bomb. And then if another bomb only kills one person, so you kind of average out the numbers. I said maybe 10 people per bomb. We're, and a thousand bombs a day? I don't even know what we're up to at this point. Maybe 15,000 bombs dropped on Gaza? This is the genocide of the Palestinian people. I don't think the Arab world's going to sit by and watch this genocide take place. I don't know. And Israel's overreaction may just doom their nation to, to non-existence. Now, I understand we're sending over 200 Marines. 200 Marines ain't going to make a daggone bit of difference. In fact, they're just going to get them killed. It's just going to be just like when we went, when I was in the Marine Corps, It'll be just like when we sent, uh, Reagan sent them to Lebanon and then that hotel and the Hezbollah came in and blew up the hotel. Killed, what was it, 260 some or 70 some Marines. You know, and then of course uh, we, we hit it with the battleships. I understand that was a hell of a sight. I talked to some Marines that were over there. Man, when those, those shells, I mean, you gotta think that shell is the size of a VW car. And when they hit, they said that the, the hillside where the, uh, cause they were taking sniper fire from this hillside. Uh, which is kind of weird because you would have thought the first thing the Marines would have done was taken the hillside. So the, the, the uh, uh, Hezbollah was sitting up on the hill plinking away at the Marines down below. You know, you always take the high ground. <laughs> I never quite understood that. But anyway, when those bombs hit that hill, I understand it. it they just said it was just vaporized. It was a, it, the concussion from those bombs was, well, you can imagine, my God, the battleships. I said, we, we've got them in mothballs. Says so hopefully... Uh, Anyway, but I, I wanted to say the same thing goes for the United States. We should be taking care of our country. So that gets me to a new topic. We're not new, but, you know, illegal immigration. And I've often wondered what the Democrat plan was by bringing millions and millions of uh, illegal immigrants into the United States. I think, and I, and this is based on, I didn't, I, I wasn't sure. I thought they were putting in a new voting block because they can't win otherwise. 
So that's what I figured, and they would just grant them all amnesty, and then they could vote in the election, and they'd more than likely vote Democrat, because at this point, think about it. They don't have jobs, they're dependent on the government. And if you're dependent on the government, you're going to vote Democrat, because that's the only way you're going to get your money to survive. I think it's a more devious plan. I think they've imported an army. And the reason I think that was the economic ninja, if you want to watch him, uh, he's getting uh, kind of out there, but I, I still watch him. And it, But it, just this latest episode, he was talking about the fact that the government has said now that banks have to lend to illegal immigrants and give them credit cards. Now, do you think those illegal immigrants are going to ever pay back those loans? Now, I don't know how much those loans are going to be for. So why are we giving the illegal immigrants all of this money if it's not to buy weapons? And then what are they going to do with those weapons? They're going to take out the MAGA Republicans. Because the MAGA Republicans are the ones that got guns, Second Amendment. Then what they're going to do is they're going to say, oh, we got chaos in the country, we got chaos in the country, and then they're going to come in and try to confiscate everybody's arms uh, to put an end to the, the madness of everybody killing each other. It's going to be mainly the illegal immigrants against the MAGA Republicans. Well, maybe a few Democrats actually have a gun. I, I don't know. So that's the, that was the next topic. The last one is great hope for the world and bad news for the United States <laughs> was what I wanted to talk about. Let's let's get a different view. So here, here, let's get the dog in the video. Hold on. Check him out. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, he's there and all his glory. I can't get him to walk, man. He's not walking today. Now, he walks really good going back. I don't know why going out a lot of times I got to just put him in that basket if I'm going to get a hike in. But the, uh, the question... Well, they think, what's going to take place, okay? And by the way, if you want to get into a good investment, I think natural gas uh, is going to going to go up. And this is based on a couple of videos that I was watching, and they explained uh, derivatives. And I didn't understand uh, derivatives. Uh, derivatives are insurance contracts. And, uh, and the insurance contracts are out it, in the hundreds and hundreds of trillions of dollars. It's, it's so out of control that there's just no way that this market can continue. And once that crashes, the whole damn thing comes tumbling down. Now, what, what the uh, Biden administration or what the neocon Republicans or the uh, rhinos, Republicans name only, those are Democrats. They all got elected by running Republican because they couldn't win as a Democrat. And people were stupid enough to vote for them. But they all lied. And, you know, it's hard to see through the lies. You know, when somebody's up there saying, I'm conservative, I'm against abortion, I, uh, I want a fiscal responsibility, and then they get in and do the complete opposite thing. Well, you elected a Democrat that just lied to you, you know. And the key is, once you realize they lied to you, is to get them the hell out on the next election. And that's what we haven't been doing a good job of uh, as Republicans. Um, so and we're paying the price at this point. But anyway, what I'm, what I'm talking about here is those insurance contracts if we get a rise in natural gas prices, as this guy pointed out, which he's betting on, and uh, I agree with him, that's going to take down the whole derivative market. Now, can you imagine hundreds of trillions of dollars imploding? That could take down the entire financial system. And then the good news is the United States can't wage war all around the world. We're going to have to shut down those bases and bring them home. Sorry about that. Phone was ringing. Expecting a phone call. So anyway, the next... Uh, well, we were talking about derivatives, and uh, so I really think that whole market within the next 90 days is going to completely crash. Uh, there was another viral video that's out on uh, TikTok, and um, the liberal hive mind, he, he did a, a, one of his segments on it, and it was a young man, made a beautiful video. He took a picture of all the prices at Costco a year ago, and then he did a, another uh, picture of all the prices at Costco on, on the same items. Uh, this year and he made a video about it and I uh, I this is why you know when I hear people on YouTube talking about that uh, one month treasuries are a no-brainer at you're, you're you're earning five percent or so I'm not so sure about that yeah you're earning five above five percent but what he was showing was some of the height of 75 percent inflation well when you're losing that much You've got to be in assets, and the best assets that I think to be in are gold, silver, and platinum. And you can buy the Sprott, that's what I do, you can buy the Sprott ETFs and just buy it and hold it, keep your powder dry. I'm not sure that keeping your powder dry in a treasury that's, that's losing value, and with the BRICS, the BRICS is going very, very rapidly. 
and people are de-dollarizing as fast as they possibly can. And uh, the blowback on that is, well, that's, that's going to be it. You know, you have to understand how the U.S. financial system works. We've been stealing money, well, not money, debt, for, uh, from the rest of the world because we had the world's reserve currency. We could print, print, print as much as we wanted, and the girl, the world uh, bought up our treasuries because uh, that was the only way that they could, tr you know, try to fight uh, inflation. Uh, well, once, once de-dollarization, uh, well, gets to a certain point, we can't, we can't do the debt no more. It'd be just like in uh, Venezuela or um, uh, Zimbabwe, you know. So we're going to see, we're going to see, in my opinion, we're going to see hyperinflation within the next, well, I want to say the next year, but I bet it's going to be a lot sooner. And if those derivatives go down, that's going to be huge. So I wanted to get to the next tweet to talk about. So it says, uh, Israel is now conducting strikes against Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon. So already we're seeing this thing expanding. Now, I understood Stan, that Hezbollah was launching rockets into Israel and maybe they had no choice. But my question on a different angle on this, how many bombs does Israel have? Okay, they've dropped a, a thousand a day on, on uh, Palestine and now they're dropping them on uh, Hezbollah. How long are those stores going to last, especially since the United States borrowed all their artillery shells and sent them to Afghanistan? And then how is the U.S. ability to resupply Israel? which I don't even think we should be involved in any of this. It's not in the U.S. interest to be involved in a mega war in the Middle East. We should be taking care of our own here at home. But the Democrats, they hate the United States. Don't tell me they don't. They wouldn't have imported 2.5 or 3 million illegal aliens and they're going to give them all the money that they need to buy weapons to basically turn the United States into a civil war. Us against the illegal immigrants. I don't know. Dark times are ahead. I'm just saying. With 75% inflation on some of those items over a year, that was crazy. I'll still continue to go through Twitter and make some comments on uh, perhaps some other stuff. But you can see how the war is expanding. And also in Jordan, from what I understand, they're, they're amassed on the border. And in Iran, uh, they're not good. they said they're not going to stop them. But there's a lot of Iranian uh, mercenaries that are on their way to join the fight. Uh, I don't know how they're going to get across those borders to get over to, uh, I guess they'll have to get to Lebanon. So this thing's growing by leaps and bounds, and the U.S. needs to stay the hell out of it, but that's just my opinion. So no sooner was I talking about illegal immigrants and the coming war, we get this tweet from Wall Street Silver. Chicago's illegal immigrants are now eligible to receive up to $9,000 in rental assistance under a new state-run program. So you see how the Democrats are setting this all up. The illegal immigrants are completely beholden to the Democrat Party. Uh, they don't even care about their own constituents anymore. Um, so, you know, when you've got that kind of money going to illegal immigrants, while well, there's homeless people on the streets in Chicago, uh, you can see where their priorities are. The, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was the drug crisis at the border. And this is part of their, their demolition plan for the United States. When you've got hundreds of thousands of people dying from illegal drugs, the Democrats don't care because they want the destruction of the United States. Don't tell me they don't. That's what a Democrat is. They hate the United States. So they're bringing all those drugs across. Now, what else have come across? Well, you got child trafficking. That's something that's, uh, that's going on. And you can't tell me the drug cartels aren't giving kickback to the Democrats. They're making a lot of money off of selling them kids into the United States. And they're making a lot of money off of those drugs. Otherwise, the Democrats wouldn't allow the drug cartels. And probably, I'm going to guess, the Democrats are arming the drug cartels. So they're armed to the teeth. So we're looking at, I think we're looking at a war. And we're, once this financial collapse happens, I hope that, uh, that you're getting prepared. Uh, also, getting back to the financial situation, I want to talk about annuities for just a minute. You understand that, you know, these annuities that people bought into... Not only did they pay a commission up front, uh, where they lost a lot of their money uh, for a guaranteed return, which is, you know, it might be a good idea. I could be wrong. I don't think so. I never bought into that whole argument. Because how many times have you seen, look at AIG, look at Bear Stearns, look at Lehman Brothers. We don't think these companies can go under. The guarantee that you have on an annuity is that the insurance company stays in business. Well, when a financial crisis hits with the trillions and trillions of dollars and derivatives, What's going to happen to those annuities? I don't know. You tell me. 
I, I if you don't have the because I don't think they're guaranteed by the federal government which the federal government's going to be broke anyway so you're going to lose out on that so it's going to be interesting and I don't even know how they're going to pay social security or medicare or any of the programs so I hope you're getting prepared and, and on preparedness I just wanted to hit on a couple of things so each month I've been picking up some mountain house why do I like mountain house well it keeps till 2025 or 2050 actually 2050 so you don't ever have to worry about it expiring it's a hell of a good meal it's a lot of calories and they're still relatively inexpensive even with inflation so you can get like five mountain house uh, I, my favorite is beef stew at Amazon and if, last time I bought it it was 1050 I bet it's probably $15 now a package but that's two meals for $15 so you figure 750 mil that's a pretty damn good price so uh, I've been stocking up on those so each month I buy a certain number of mountain house and you can go to rei.com or cabela's.com and get you a variety man they got chicken they got lasagna and they're really good and uh, they'll keep forever and so that way when the crisis hits because here's here's my plan and I'm just telling you what I'm gonna do when the stuff hits the fan I'm just gonna hunker down because you can't go to the grocery store because everything's gonna be chaos I imagine the shelves are gonna be empty your supply chain is gonna be broken so I'm just gonna kind of survive off of those mountain house meals for a while until things settle down because what's going to happen is they're going to have to establish a whole new financial system you're going to be looking at months and months of chaos so if I can survive a good six months which I can as long as they don't cut the water off and even with the water I've got a water filter I hope you do too I can I can pump out of a mud puddle but that's I tell you what it's tough being without water and that's why I feel for the people in Gaza and of course I don't know if you knew there was a, a hospital that was it they're saying it was a Palestinian rocket that went awry could be I mean, how many times in Ukraine did they say that the Russians blew up an apartment building or something, and then we come to find out it was a Ukrainian rocket that went, went astray? So it's a possibility, but I don't know. I, with Israel dropping a thousand bombs a day, I, I think a more likely possibility is Israel blew up that hospital, because this is genocide. You have to understand that. You right-wing lunatics, this is genocide, and you're for it. You'd think that the Israelis, after what took place in World War II, would be against genocide of any race of people. Anyway, let's let's get back into the hike and I'll get another clip here in a minute. So a while back, I made a video about the Liberal Democrats back in the 60s. And uh, Billy Jack was part of the video. That was a great movie. I encourage you to watch that. And the Democrats kind of used to be known as the party of peace. They were against the Vietnam War. And, uh, you know, it was... Uh, it was, you know, the huge uh, Woodstock, a lot of demonstrations across the country against the Vietnam War. It was, uh, it was a sight to behold. Today, I call them the warmongering Democrats or the Borg. They're literally the Borg. They vote 100% together and they vote for war every single time. So the warmongering Democrats. Now, with that said, I wanted to get to a tweet that uh, that I loved, and this is Dr. Simon. Got it. G O D D E K, and uh, he puts out some good. Uh, he was against the uh, vaccine mandates and all of that, and uh, and I I just thought he basically just re re hit every topic that I, I agree with, and so I'm just going to hit this. I neither support Israel nor Palestine. I'd rather support Russia than the corrupt Ukraine. I don't care about pronouns and don't respect them. I never wore a mask. I don't trust the mainstream media. I consider climate change, climate change corrupt. I consider it a hoax. Uh, I eat more meat than vegetables. I condemn extremism of any kind. I'm still waiting for the Epstein client list. <laughs> I thought that was a cute one. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever get that because a lot of rich people took advantage of those young women. And uh, I stand by my Christian Western values. Yep. And uh, I won't stop until Fauci and Holtz, H-O-T-E-Z, are brought to trial. Yeah, Fauci's a war criminal. He should be at an international tribunal right now, basically facing the death penalty. He killed millions of people around the world. And yet the Democrats defend him. The Borg defend Fauci. So... And then he says, uh, and he goes on with this. Uh, it's just the greatest tweet ever. Unfortunately, I watched as hundreds of COVID allies verbally attack each other and block one another on this platform over differing opinions on other topics. 
I won't participate in that. Agree to disagree is the key, yeah. Like Elon Musk said, I haven't blocked anybody. You can tell me whatever the hell you want. So, I wanted to point out that warmongering Democrats have spent hundreds of billions in Ukraine. I went back through my feed because I kind of wanted to finish up this video with something about Ukraine. It's been completely erased from the news. You won't find even a report about it on mainstream media. And why? Because it's a failed project and they don't know how to get out. And they spent hundreds of billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars when we could have used that money to help the homeless build infrastructure, do things with, no, the warmongering Democrats, they want to wage war on the whole damn world. My God, how did these people come into existence? Anyway, here, let's finish off with a video from Ukraine. So speaking to Ukraine, one last thing, because I think Putin was brilliant. Just like in Vietnam, which we lost, just like in Korea, which we lost, just like in Afghanistan, which we lost, just like in Iraq, which the United States lost, uh, just like in Libya, which the United States lost, just like in Syria, which the United States lost. He knew that eventually the United States would screw Ukraine and that eventually we would lose. And so he showed great patience, just waiting, just by attrition. 500 to 1,000 dead Ukrainians each day until he knew the war would eventually come to an end and the United States couldn't support it anymore. And the beautiful thing was he got world opinion. So he single-handedly avoided uh, nuclear war. Because I think if he had marched across Ukraine with everything he's got, killing everything in sight, uh, that uh, we would have used a tactical nuke because we've got lunatics in charge of the United States government neocon Republicans like Lindsey Graham, that's the biggest war money, and of course Ro Mitt Mittens Romney, that's what I like to call him. Thank God they'll, well hopefully, Mitt well Mittens Romney ship is going to be gone. God knows if Georgia don't elect Lindsey Graham. So that's it. Just wanted to say that one thing. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>